There's been a lot of talk about Tony versus Habib since they were matched up a long, long time ago. Um, and it has never happened. It was supposed to happen, what, three or four times? At least three times it was supposed to happen. Four um, times. Four. Yeah, four yeah. times. So it hasn't happened. And now it looks like there might be some more roadblocks to for this happening because of um, Habib's manager saying that he's not going to fight Tony Ferguson next. Dana White apparently, not apparently, Dana White did say on TMZ, there was actually a video of it, that in 2019, Conor versus Habib probably happens again. That doesn't mean it's his next fight, but I'm going to throw it to you, Jason. What's your thoughts on Habib versus Tony? Is this fight cursed? Will it happen in 2019? And why <laughs> is it so important? Well, uh, yes, it is 100%, 1,000%, whatever you want to say. It's definitely cursed. That's <laughs> like 100% sure. Um, it's super annoying, you know. Like, I felt like we finally uh, maybe moved past this weird stage that we've been in since McGregor won the belt in 2016 and then went on to fight Floyd Mayweather and didn't come back for uh, over two years, you know, like, well, almost two years, almost exactly two years. And, I felt like we finally got past that point. You know, like Habib won. He won definitively. How how often do you see somebody win definitively? Um, it wasn't like he he almost knocks him out in one round. It wasn't like it was close back and forth. It wasn't like McGregor had some really good moments. He really didn't have any really strong moments. Like I, I think some people actually said that he, you know, um, uh, he outperformed maybe their expectations on the ground, but he mm -hmm. still got dominated, so it didn't really amount to much. That's the best you could possibly say. It didn't amount to much. <laughs> like, I'm not really saying much good about uh, the performance. Why in the world would we want to see a repeat of that? Now, what fight have you ever seen that's that dominate? Uh, it's it's 100% a money choice. It's an empty, total... Like, there's no real good reason behind it. It's not a love of the sport type kind of decision that you make where you're like, we got to see this fight again, even though it doesn't make sense. It's just that good of a fight. You, you can't say anything like that. It's 100% a money decision. That's all it is. There's nothing else you can put on it. And that that's always a weak reason. I'm not, I'm not going to come out here like Brendan Schaub or somebody like that and argue for the UFC. They're billionaires. Uh, what did uh, Dana White make off of the, the sale, like $390 million? Yeah. I don't give a fuck if he makes more money. I don't give a fuck if the UFC makes more money. They're, they're rich. They're all rich. I don't care. So I'm, I will never, ever, ever argue, uh, argue for a money fight because it's like, oh, yeah, it's, who cares about that? Why would anybody care about that? So, like, the the other side of that, though, arguing from the, the other side, this doesn't make an argument for the Conor McGregor fight, but to argue against the Tony versus Habib fight, um, they have fallen out four times, two apiece. You know, it was, it was Tara Masu and uh, 209, and it was... Uh, uh, what what happened? It was the the trip wire <laughs> where he literally tripped over tripped some over television wire, yeah. equipment. Yeah, uh, that's where Tony um, and then uh, Habib got injured for one of them. Uh, the the I think it was the first meeting, and uh, and then I guess uh, it was Tony and the other one. I can't actually remember why he fell out the first time, but that's four times. So from the other side of the coin, I can't understand why Dana White is just like fuck this fight. You guys have screwed me. Like. We can say we want that fight as much as we want, but we haven't lost mm. millions of dollars as a consequence. As someone who is losing those millions of dollars and is it's their money, I could see how the UFC is just like, um, I'm not ready for that. It's been less than a year since the last time. Um, my opinion as a fan, I don't care. I want to see that fight, mm. you know. Um, but trying to play devil's advocate there a little bit, it's the fight we need, though. You know, it's it's. It's everything that fighting is about. It's everything that UFC has always said they've been about. Like Dana White always used to say over and over and over, what my job to do as a promoter is put on the fight the fans want to see. Yeah. And this, but that that's that's a weird crossroads though. I think we as hardcore fans, we all want to see Habib versus Tony. Very few of the hardcore fans want to see Conor fight again. Very few of the hardcore fans do. But. If you if you just strictly go off those words, the fight the fans want to see, and you go towards the casual side of it, 2.5 million people bought that. So the fight the fans want to see on the casual end of it, it's still true. But I think fight fans, they're your backbone. They're the ones that really promote things from the inside. I mean, I don't think nearly as many people would have known who Conor McGregor was if it wasn't for... 
I mean, word of mouth is the most powerful way of getting something out there. Yeah. You know, if you're a small business, whatever it is, it's somebody actually going out and say, this is amazing. You have to check it out. It's like how many how many bands or how many songs or how many movies have you watched without a recommendation from a friend? There's a very social element to all this stuff. And I think that comes from the hardcore fans because we're the ones always talking about it and you can't neglect that audience. I do think. Um, that us getting up and saying like, Hey, this is a terrible fight. And fans just saying, you know, no, this, <laughs> like, we're not in for this. Mm. Dana White can obviously, you know, veto that very easily. But I think us as the fans, I think we should say, yeah, this fight needs to happen. And it's kind of bullshit that it's not. And that Connor is going to go up there after getting dominated. I mean, I, there's zero reason to watch that fight again without Connor having some sort of impressive performance that shows he's changed in some way. I mean, if he got like a submission in his next fight or something like that, then maybe you can make the case like, okay, yeah, yeah. he's really been working on his ground game or something like that. Maybe you can come back and actually do something here. None of that. Um, but there's my long rants. Uh, I'm the one that came up with the line, <laughs> the importance of Habib versus Tony Ferguson. And so like, obviously I had a ton of thoughts here. Um, yeah. and sorry, sorry to go on forever, but no, I think, said, okay, Jason, take a breath, but <laughs> yeah, take, I'll take a breath now. Take, take a few breaths. The, the weird one about it is that like, it, as you said, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do Connor versus Habib and Habib versus Tony makes all the sense in the world. And it's not like, you know, if you bring Connor back, there's not fights for him to have. There's plenty of fights for him to have and fights that probably make maybe not the same amount of money because I know it's all about money these days. Maybe not the same amount of money as Habib versus Connor. But also, I think at a point when you're the promoter, I think if you can, you know, accommodate your hardcore audience by saying, let's go and let's do Habib versus Ferguson and then you bring Connor back and then you do Connor versus, you could have done Cowboy. You could have done Cowboy. Like that, that would have been a really, really good fight. And, the casual <laughs> yeah. fans will watch that. The casual fans will love that as well. So it's not yeah. like you're boxed into this situation where, you know, Habib should fight Tony, but the only fight that makes sense for Connor is Habib. That's not where we're at right now. There's plenty of fights for him. Bring him back and let him fight anybody and they'll make money off it. So it's very, very strange. I also think, you know, the fact that Dana has stopped talking about Tony versus Habib and now that Ali Abdelaziz has said it's not going to happen, I don't like the sound of that. I really, really don't because this is usually how it starts. It's almost like they go out and they'll, you know, they'll put the feelers out to the public and see what people think of it. Um, and then they'll announce something. So I'm kind of scared at what they're going to announce and when they're going to announce it because, um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's a weird one. Yeah. Um, it's funny that we're at, <laughs> like, th there's actually a bit of a compromise that you presented there. It's like, well, what's the harm in having Khabib and uh, Tony fight? I guess the harm is that Tony wins and you don't get the rematch between uh, Habib and Connor. But you you are almost at this point of just saying, well, if you at least give us that fight, okay, you can do Connor after that. You know, yeah. you can always. I mean, what if Habib lost? It would still be a great rematch. Yeah. Uh, you know, like I mean, it would still make sense to do the rematch because then it it'd make more sense even because they'd be both coming off of losses. So the worst case scenario is you don't get it as a title fight, but you get it as a fight from there. And there's a lot of reasons to say Habib would win, uh, depending on what side of the, the coin you are, de depending on who you're kind of going for there. So I think it's win-win if you just have that fight go first. And then if you're the UFC and you're just that obsessed with making that fight because it's going to bring you that money in, just do it after it doesn't yeah. hurt anything. Michael, it's only going to make Habib look better if you win. Yeah, Michael uh, Witherspoon in the chat made a great point that we didn't bring up, but we do bring up every live chat. Why is everybody forgetting about Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor 3? We want the trilogy fight. And now is the perfect time to make that fight. Why not make that fight now? It's perfect. Conor just lost. Um, Nate has been inactive. And, you know, Nate would love that fight, I'm sure. You know, it's one of the reasons why he didn't come back for a long time. And now you can just... just Give Tony Ferguson that goddamn fight and um, let's do the, the trilogy fight. It's the perfect time. Don't mess it up. Just do the trilogy fight right now. Yeah, we actually advocated for that in our last video. Yeah. The uh, the fights we need to see in 2019. Yeah. That was that was one of the, the higher up entries there. It, it makes more sense than it's ever made. Um, since like when Connor had the belt, I, I guess it would have sort of made sense as sort of a retribution for the fact that Connor had an immediate rematch against him. But now they're both coming off the of losses. Make the fight now. That's the best time to do it. That's a way better fight to make than Habib. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> um, the Notorious one said, who wants to see Connor back in there in 2019? I think everybody does. And to be honest, yeah. 
I think if you don't want to see Conor McGregor fight in 2019, we're not saying fight Khabib, we're just saying fight. You're probably yeah. not the biggest MMA fan because at the end of the day, he is an excellent fighter. And if he goes in there, it's going to be a spectacle, but he's still a tremendous fighter. So for anybody who says, I don't want to see him <laughs> in there, maybe you don't want to see, you know, the the actions that he does sometimes, maybe the, the outside stuff. But at the end of the day, he's still entertaining to watch. So 100% I want to see him back in there in 2019. Yeah, like, it doesn't matter how much you hate the guy. Like, yeah. Even better, I if you hate wrote, him, watch, because yeah. he might lose. <laughs> and I co-wrote the video that some people really hate that uh, is on our channel about Colby Covington. Like, well done, I co-wrote Jason. that video about the Colby Covington farce. I want to see that guy fight. Like, it, it should never matter if you dislike a guy. Like, it's fighting. You're wanting to watch fighting. Somebody said uh, Habib uh, versus Jason Hartley. Uh, I would die. <laughs> i would die instantly yeah i'd probably take so, uh, in that fight, surprisingly yeah surprisingly yeah. i'll take the underdog i'll take the, <laughs> yeah. uh, 